Attorney Travis Walton. A man who's about to take a unique and terrifying journey. A journey to the other side of his belief system. All of his notions of reality will be called into question. At first, it seemed like any other night as they headed home from work. What's that? I don't know. Maybe it's forest fire. I don't see any smoke. Yeah, well, what the hell is it? Get closer to it, Mike. Get closer to it. saw was not that far away I mean we could we could see this thing it was clear it was distinct it wasn't uh, uh, just a point of light in the sky or anything like this this was very close you could have thrown a rock and hit it I was scared but uh, like everyone there but I got out and went towards it uh, it might have been a foolish thing but uh, I was thinking this thing might uh, take off you know it just I just wanted to get a closer look and I figured this thing would vanish. Travis! Get back in here! After we'd put maybe a quarter of a mile distance between us and it, I suddenly realized what we'd done. And I uh, realized that our friend was back there, that I'd left him there. So I stopped the truck, and several of them didn't want that at all. And I says, well, we have to. We have to go back. He could be, he could be hurt. Obviously, it's hurt, and we can help him. We went back to the site. The thing was gone. Travis was gone. So uh, we thought maybe uh, he wandered off somewhere. So we conducted a hand-in-hand -hand search, you might say, uh, six grown men walking around in the woods, about as close to each other as they could get. We decided that uh, without being able to find him, we would have to uh, do something. What would we do? We, all we could think of was go to the authorities. The sheriff arrived and listened to their story. He was cautious, but not completely disbelieving. He decided the only thing to do was to go back up the hill in the morning and look for Travis. Three of the guys had no intention of going back up the hill. They wanted to stay right down there where they were. And uh, so me and one other fella and several of the sheriff people went back up the hill and covered all the roads below and above. and. Uh, we looked for tracks, we looked for sign, we listened. We couldn't uh, find him at all. There was no trace of him at all, no tracks of any kind anywhere. It just seemed that, that they must have taken him, whoever they were, we had no idea at that point. It's only maybe 100 feet or so away from us. You know, just sitting and filled this whole area in here. See how it's all burnt up and stuff? It was huge, you know, it was filled this whole thing up and just it's the weirdest damn thing I've ever seen. Somebody from somewhere other than this world had taken him, and he was just not there. Mike Rogers and the sheriff went to inform Walton's mother that her son was missing. I'm sorry. I left him. I didn't know what to do. I'm sorry. All through that night, and the the next several days, it was incomprehensible. We, we could not understand what had happened. It just didn't sink in. Something had happened, something 
odd had happened. We didn't know if it was terrible, whether it was great, we didn't know, but it's something that we couldn't understand that happened, and it was, it was very uh, traumatic, very traumatic, the most traumatic event that I have ever encountered. The sheriff from Hallbrook expected that the men had murdered Travis and buried his body in the woods and that they were using the UFO story as an alibi. Dallas, why don't you tell us about this conversation with Travis? Joe, they was just talking about his sister. Now they've been dating. Do you have a problem with Travis here, son? Travis was my best friend. Why would I kill him? I don't know. I understand he wanted to marry your sister. Maybe you didn't like that idea. <laughs> if you boys are all telling the truth, why not take a lie detector test? It's fine with me. Hell yeah, I'll do it. Well, good. We'll get to the bottom of this yet. A few days later, the polygraph examiner gave an official report. They told Mike Rogers that this was the first time the polygraph examiner had such a large number of subjects regarding the same event. He said his findings positively proved that the men did see something they believed to be a UFO. No. Did you see spacecraft? Yes, I did. Later, Travis returned with a remarkable story. When I felt the numbing shock, I blacked out. And the next thing I knew, I regained consciousness. Uh, not quickly, sort of uh, gradually. Uh, my head wasn't real clear. I was in, in a lot of pain. I was laying on my back. I didn't know where I was. Um, I, I remembered what had happened in the woods. As I was regaining consciousness, I was trying to figure out what I was and what was going on. Maybe I was in a, a hospital or something that I'd been hurt. And I was standing in front of those things that were coming towards me. And they stopped there and they stood there looking at me. These huge eyes just seemed to just look right through me. I, I didn't get any impression of emotion. It was a very uh, detached sort of just observing sort of thing, but it seemed like they could see everything I was thinking and feeling. Very disturbing feeling to feel so exposed. They, these huge eyes looked at me and when they, they'd blink and on an eye that big, the eyelid just slid down and opened like a, like a window opening and shutting. And it was it just had the strangest sort of feeling. I just couldn't, I couldn't bear their, their gaze. Get back! Get back! was a lever there and when I moved that the star pattern appeared to move that kind of disoriented me for a minute because you know it felt like I was moving kind of for a second because this was you know to have everything suddenly shift like that but um, I figured I better quit messing with that I, I 
you know, I had by that time surmised that I was in some sort of craft and connected it to what had happened before and figured I might crash this thing or something. This person was not like these humanoid creatures that I'd seen earlier. This looked like a human being, looked like a man in a blue uniform. I went up to him thinking, you know, that I was being rescued, that I was being saved, uh, that this was a person, you know. I started asking all kinds of questions. Where am I? I mean, where are we? I mean, who were those things that I saw? Talk to me. through some doors, down a hallway, to another room. What are you testing? What's going on here? I mean, who are you people? Don't touch me. Don't touch me! Don't get your hands off me! What are you doing? Don't touch me! What are you doing? Five days had passed before Travis returned. He was asked to take a lie detector test. He too had passed. Little did he know that this event would cast a shadow over the rest of his life. The thing that has brought more frustration and, and pain into my life as a result of all this happening is the fact that people can't see me anymore, me as a person. I get a feeling of invisibility because of this thing. Every contact I have with people is covered by, is filtered through the distorting lens of something that just happened to me 15 years ago. And, and it is something that just happened to me. Uh, I didn't do anything special or heroic. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not a hero or a celebrity anymore that I'm a uh, de deceiving rascal or, or a, a crackpot space cadet sort of person. Um, I, I would like to be seen as myself rather than in terms of this thing that just happened to me. It could have happened to anyone. All of the woodsmen moved away except Mike and Travis. Travis married Mike's sister, Dana, and have four beautiful children, and still live in the same small town in Arizona, where no one has forgotten what happened more than 30 years ago.